and it's I'm five minutes late. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I don't have anything I'm testing today. I'm trying to get my angle right with my mic. That's about it. As you know, my name is Laurel Papworth. I'm a social media strategist and workshop facilitator, Zoom person. And on Mondays, I do a live stream on YouTube, Facebook times two, Twitter slash Periscope and LinkedIn, uh, not Twitch, so that I can check my setup and also do the social media news for last week. This is where I catch up on any social media news that I missed in the last week. If you're not used to me wearing glasses, <laughs> apparently boys make passes at girls with glasses. I hope not. I'm much too busy for all that rubbish. Um, Donna. Hi, Donna. I remember you. Donna from LinkedIn is up. And um, didn't you come to one of my courses at the University of Sydney oh, a decade ago? I don't know. I'm feeling very old. Hence, I have a vitamin drink because, as you know, I cough a lot during these sessions because I talk too much. Right, so the tool that I'm using here, let's see where I can go. I have played around with a few buttons. I've moved me around. <laughs> and that's easier in Zooms as well, plus I can just get rid of myself. Uh, let's put me in the top right. So I'm using Feedly. I've gone back to Feedly. Inner Reader didn't cut it for me. It didn't have enough. Uh, it didn't find services that Feedly can find. So what I do with Feedly is I create a dashboard so that I can catch up on all my news. I create folders and I put all my websites in here and I pull in the RSS or API or whatever it is it's using, apps, I think, um, to read the news. And then when I see some news that I think is interesting, what algorithm auditing, you know what, I think I'm going to change the theme yeah, is that easier for you guys to read? I have switched, we switched down to 1280 by 720 to make it a bit larger, but I can make it bigger because I know that some of you like to watch this on your smart device, which is smarter than me. All right, um, when I click on an article and I think it's interesting, I can then share it to... Buffer and Hootsuite or directly to Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter and then there's a bunch more down here. So somebody did ask about that. I'm sorry, I've forgotten who it was. But yes, you don't just read here. It's um, it's inbound and outbound. So it's inbound to read and then outbound for distributed social media um, content. Of course, it's ad hoc. So the news of the day, let's have a look and see what's going on in Australian social media. I did have a quick look through. I wanted to see how me what media we're responding to. Uh, what I find particularly interesting is a, tr a lot of the traditional media focus on if it bleeds, it leads. So it's social media discovers a alleged cheater. Um, then there's a, a bunch of stuff on that very politically motivated uh, trying to make Facebook and Google pay to send traffic to uh, traditional media so they can get advertising revenue and subscriptions as well. Uh, so that's that's a triple dip. And it's political because if you're overseas, uh, Rupert Murdoch is Australian. He owns a lot of papers here. The other papers compete with Rupert Murdoch's papers. They're all very right-wing. We have a right-wing government. So keeping these people happy is important in spite of the fact that the readership of, for instance, the flagship The Australian is is either very old, so it's a lot of retired CEOs and investors, I'm not saying they're not, or politicians read it, and really not many other people. So it's a very small readership. They make a loss every year, but it's worth it to them because the politicians think that it's it has the measure of the temperature in Australia. And, of course, we know that social media has that measure. So that's a kind of a key thing. Let's go back to here. Okay. Um, 
what else do we have here? Another shocking story. Allegedly, uh, somebody who's doing a social media campaign about wealth education um, for a big online seminar used her band lawyer father as an advisor. I really just think that some of this stuff, I haven't read it, but we need to go in and read it more. Fake patient, fake social media, all alleged stuff. Um, reporting on Hootsuite's blog, which I'll show you in a moment. I've already got. Now, what I'm not seeing here, what I'm not seeing here is social finance. So the devastating impact, and we're just at that beginning of the wave, that the games stop uh, online the online community on this on subreddit that's been working for over a year to look at how the markets are shorting game stops stock so um gamestop was in a very good financial position and could pay off all of its debts and then they try the the hedge funds try to crash gamestop so they could short the stock which just basically means instead of um, buying it when it's low and selling it when it's high that you try to crash the stock so that it goes back down low again so you can rebuy the stock and you have you can't the problem is if you buy fresh the stock fresh I don't know what the te technical term is um, the stock price goes up so what you want to do is borrow other people's stock and then crash the price sell it, crash the price and then rebuy it, give it back to the original people and keep the difference. That's shorting. And Reddit found out about it and decided to break that system. Let me be clear on something. This is the same issue that media had. I remember 15 years ago speaking to the guy that set up News Digital for Rupert Murdoch and he ran Rupert Murdoch's Australasia uh, um, industries and I said to him that social media it wasn't called that then it was called an online community user generated news stories or something would break traditional media in ways that we hadn't yet fathomed and he said to me there are regulations around media we're protected and of course now the regulations have done nothing and it's up to Facebook and Google's YouTube and Twitter to self-regulate and by taking out all political news off of Facebook and by banning uh, world politicians on Twitter, we can see how those regulations are playing out. So that's, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but I was very clear what would happen. Years later, not uh, still a decade ago, I spoke to the uh, vice president at a big bank, one of the big five banks here in Australia, and was explaining peer-to-peer -peer banking and how it worked. Um, I have a history with peer-to-peer -peer banking. I've worked with some of the world leading peer-to-peer -peer banks. I worked with Australia's first peer-to-peer -peer bank, not the one that's currently saying they're the first, the one before them. And, um, and I also took out a patent in user-generated uh, algorithmic currencies, so community-based nanotask decentralized currencies three years before Bitcoin came out. So I have some sort of an understanding of this stuff. And when I spoke to the VP at the bank and I explained peer-to-peer -peer banking, he said, oh, it will never happen. Peer-to-peer -peer finance can't possibly be a thing. There are regulations about that. And I'm telling you now, when the community finds its power, whether it's to do with fake news or fake finance or fake health or something else, they run with it and they will choose chaos in a hyper-constricted, unfair playing field that's not level before they choose, um, you know, that's not how it works, that you're not playing the game how we play it. So it's hilarious that Wall Street calls them dumb money because they're not that dumb. Let's have a look. There's nothing in Australia about it because our traditional media, talking about social media, doesn't see the... It always thinks of social media as being, uh, what, a connection between... It, a marketing tool, kind of, you know, promotions and ads. It's not thinking about... And maybe privacy. It's not thinking about fundamental evolutionary changes to large communities. 
So what do we have here for Australia? We have a Tourism Australia campaign. $5 million a week long advertising blitz. $5 million week long advertising blitz. It's not a lot of money, is it? I don't know. I work with global companies. And I wonder what their social media campaigns are. I know all about domestic tourism. I've done a lot of work in tourism. Hmm. I think it's going to be all billboards and can't be TV ads for that money unless they've crashed again. Publisher created content in program editorial. National advertising on TV, online and print and 2,500 outdoor ads. There are some massive, massive communities that would so fit in with these kind of campaigns. So, for instance, the Van Life, the Van Life Australia groups, all of whom, including us, me and my partner, are um, creating vans and looking at travelling with vans and doing that kind of sort of thing, I guess, where we uh, travel around. There's also sporting groups that are doing all kinds of trips, backyard trips. I don't know. Tourism Australia has changed a lot since they did one of the most well-known and popular social media campaigns. Um, their agencies, that was the best job in the world on the islands. Do you remember that one years ago? I was on a few panels about that. So um, media are from Sydney and they're the media buy, I guess. So they're working with Tourism Australia. And the other one is MNC Saatchi. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a piece on uh, Tourism Australia, Tourism South Australia, not Australia, Tourism, whatever, using New York companies to do a buy local campaign. I don't know about you, I just saw a bit of hypocrisy there. It's sort of like Woolworths coming out with a range of T-shirts that say buy Australian and they're made in China. You know what I'm talking about, Woolworths. So they're using, presumably using the local Australian MNC Saatchi. They're London, aren't they? Saatchi, yeah, I think so. So, okay, Tourism Australia are doing a campaign. It's coming up under my social media dashboard, but it's not really what I would call social media for Australia. Announcing Twitter. No, that's an old, old thing. What else do we have here? Let's go into Big Data. This is not Australia. This is just general. AI needs open labelling platform. Yeah, I agree. What algorithm auditing startups need to succeed? A better understanding of algorithms. Uh, brands face a year of change with consumer privacy laws. Let's have a look at that one. So there's... You probably all know the European Act, what was it called? The GDPR, blah, blah, something, acronyms. And now California Privacy Act, Privacy Rights Act, and Apple's compliance about opt-out of tracking. GDPR, that's it. I was right, yes. <laughs> Advertisers are also struggling with the concept of consumers using multiple devices. One of the things they're doing is they're removing browser-based um, tracking. You have to use back-end-based tracking now, which is why the pixel retargeting thing, Chrome pixels, are going away. Safari's already lost theirs. Firefox doesn't have it. If you're not familiar with pixel tracking, let me go to my website. 
I don't use mine in the sense of I don't use them for remarketing. I'll just move me out over there. You don't, I think that's going to be better. Yeah. So at the top here, I've put a plug-in and called Facebook Pixel Helper and it's from Facebook and it's on Chrome. And Facebook's just one of the pixels. But when I put these plugins in, I can see every website that has pixel tracking. And what it's doing is it's looking to see what I do on the website. If I put something in a shopping cart, but then I don't purchase it, um, what products I'm interested in. And then when I get back to, you know, if it's a Google pixel or LinkedIn pixel or a Facebook Pixel, Amazon Pixel, eBay Pixel, when I get back to another website, like a, a platform, I'm remarketed the thing that I looked at. So if I'm on eBay and I look at secondhand something, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> what was I on eBay for the other day? Oh, I was selling my laptop. So um, if you go and look at my laptop, you'll probably get ads for other laptops, something like that. I don't know. Um, I use mine for back-end analytics only. I tend not to do the ads because I actually have – I don't mind seeing general numbers, uh, but I don't actually want to do that sort of personalised I'm stalking you type of advertising. But clients do and I have to navigate my personal ethics and values versus a company – which is not a person, no matter what they say the law is, that it can be treated like a person. Um, and it's again that thing of if the regulations don't follow up, and they don't, the regulations are just there to help incumbents, um, in my personal opinion. Um, then what we need to do is have either the organisations like Chrome, Google Chrome or Apple iPhones step in or we have to rely on the user being educated and they're just not educated. So I want to talk about Apple blocking this pixel tracking, which is covered um, in this article. And what I thought was hilarious, I'll just show you. I got to VentureBeat and it insisted that I log in with Google so they can track me. And I also went to the New York Times and they insisted that, and I did actually log in with my Google account and so they can track me while they talk about the privacy labels. <laughs> so media play the game while throwing stones. Glass houses, people. I never signed up for WhatsApp because it insisted on having access to my contact list. And I will also shot, make a shot across the bow of Clubhouse, join Clubhouse, the Clubhouse app. I refuse to connect my contact list and it won't allow me to add contacts unless I upload everybody in my network. I have a pretty substantial network. And some of those people are extremely private, including a whole bunch, and I mean a lot, of politicians. So I am worldwide. So I'm not uploading my contact list. Thanks a lot. Um, and I'm pretty careful with how that's stored. So iCloud and all that stuff. So what this guy did was, on January the 28th, is he reverse engineered and looked at the data privacy of the apps that have been labelled as being private. And he looked at WhatsApp and Signal and Spotify and Apple Music and a game that he plays called MyQ, which is you have to find something in a mess of pictures or something. I don't know. If you know it, let me know. <laughs> um, let me come out of the way. And so he read the privacy labels. If you're a marketing person and you're wondering what those labels are, it, you can choose between data is used to track you. So your email address can identify you also the person using another app where you entered the same email address. So this would be, be me logging in with Gmail into New York Times and then logging into a game. And so it's possible to tell that people that play this game, crossword puzzles or something, also read the New York Times. Data is linked to you. 
So your purchase history using credit card or tracking on websites. Uh, the credit card is pulled in through data brokers, so don't think it's necessarily a MasterCard or Visa pulling it in. Using this data, a music app can see that your account bought a certain song. And people will say, oh, well, that's fine because um, I get recommended music that I would like because I bought the song. That's the positive side. The negative side is you bought uh, certain pharmaceutical things at a chemist and then your insu health insurance goes up or your declined extended health insurance or something like that. So, you know, you buy toothache medicine one day and then you go to renew your health insurance and it says you're not uh, eligible for uh, dental or something. I don't know. But this has been well known, well known to happen. In fact, there was an issue with the UK government selling NHS health data to health insurance companies. And I think Singapore's recently come under fire for contact tracing. In fact, I think it's worth just stepping out of this for a moment, having a look at this. By the way, this is what I do. I dive around. I jump down rabbit holes because it's important for me. Uh, what do I want? Singapore contact tracing. It's important f for me to link. I like to link things in a non-linear way. <laughs> Let's just say that. Singapore police can co obtain COVID-19 contact tracing data for criminal investigations. Mm. Broken promises traced together. I lived in Singapore for a while. The people that live there are not silly. I'm just going to leave it there. And that's the issue. And while we're talking about this... I think it's important that uh, we also think about the fact that Australia declined in a referendum. Um, to have a national identity card. So something like the American Social Security card. We refused it. We refused it and we refused to allow our credit card or our driver's license to be turned into that. What I'm noticing with Victor Dominello, the Minister for Customer Service, uh, is he's basically turning the Service.NewSouthWales app into the national or the statewide identity card so that it's not only used for contact tracing and checking in and checking out of locations, which is fair enough during a pandemic, but it's being extended and extended. So you get uh, coupon rewards for, and there's a whole gamification around grabbing your data for uh, non-necessary, non-pandemic based services that you're using and that allows the government and the third parties that connect to government I'm guessing Telstra Health and things like that uh, will eventually have access to a whole bunch of that data and you can say that it's anonymized but there's too many cases of anonymized data being de-anonymized and it's interesting to me that media not picking up on this fact that we voted against a national identity card and then our phone is being turned into a national identity card so there's a bunch of things there that I think we need to look at this is a new show not a rant let's move on <laughs> um so Apple versus Facebook on customer data. Now, when I go back to that article, it's one of the things that he identified was that um, so WhatsApp taps far more of our data than Signal does. So this is the data that WhatsApp collects and this is what Signal collects. My issue is with the privacy label. Um, this is not policed at all. And a lot, and I mean a lot of companies, are being discovered to be falsely labelling Apple apps as being secure or private when they're not. 
And um, this article doesn't go into that. It's just looking at the big apps. But I have read a lot of investigations, security-based investigations, that are uh, looking at how the apps are labelled in the app store. They read out the piece or they copied and pasted the piece where Apple says it's self-regulatory, that they don't promise anything, that it's up to the companies to self-report. And then they investigated versus the label what the companies actually did about a a small percentage of the companies relabeled after they were approached by the journalist and a lot of the companies just ignored the journalists and kept on going. It's like, we will grab all your data while we can. How do you feel about that? And please don't fall into that trap of thinking, oh, it's just better advertising. I get better ads based on based on what I look at and what my interests are. It's not that. It's whether you get a mortgage or a loan. It's whether your kids can go to a school that they want to go to or you want to send them to or not. It's whether you'll get the job that you want or not. This data is being used not just for advertising and marketing. I wish people would stop calling social media or seeing social media as the same as social media marketing. Marketing is just one part of it. Think about social finance. Think about how that subreddit group played with the with the market and tell me where the marketing is in that. It's not about that. <laughs> um, yeah. And tracking of phones and stuff, we've known that for a long time. Don't ever go to the oncologist and take your phone or any IoT device with you and wear as many masks and hats as you can so that facial recognition doesn't pick you up because it's a thing. Let me go to Facebook pages over here. How's your day been? Cheering you up, am I? (laughs) Monday morning cheer up. (laughs) not let me just check and see all the feeds are going out goody 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 I thought it was interesting last week we had the most discussion on Periscope which is finishing in a few weeks Uh, I think it was Periscope was it last week or was it the week before Mm, doesn't matter anyway I need to finish up Uh, Thursday Government and was it? We did analytics, didn't we, last week? But content, all the different kinds of social media diaries and tools and electronic programming guide for government. And then I need to finish up on government. Uh, the what our over social media overlords are doing is they're removing political news out of news feeds so that we don't stay up to date on what the community is thinking, looking at you, Facebook. They're removing anything that's targeting a government or about government, so social issues um, out of the news feeds. So I can't, I'm finding that my government stuff is not getting into feeds. So because it's social media for government, it comes under that sort of credit, housing and uh, jobs. YMYL, it's called Your Money, Your Life. So that data set means that my stuff is removed out of the news feed. So I'm going to move on to something else. I think I'll move on to education, <laughs> um, social media and universities and colleges because I just – it we're fighting that. Now, watch for Facebook and Twitter taking out finance news out of the feeds as – I, I noticed the other day that Discord had got rid of the uh, the subreddit group with Wall Street. What are they called? Wall Street Meets. I know that the user that generated all this is deep, deep frigging value. You can change frigging to the correct word, and that that was the user that 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 discovered the games the GameStop uh, shorting where where the hedge funds were playing the market and trying to get the company to crash and so they fought back against it um 
I think, you know, now that uh, Robin Hood is, if you go to Robin Hood app on Twitter, in fact, we can do that. I don't want to cover this in too much depth because I really need a whole hour of this. Uh, let me go to the thing, though. Uh, if you want me to do something, that's not it. Robin, don't worry, I'll put it up on the screen in a sec. Hmm, Robin Hood up. This one, I think. Yeah, this will do. So I talked before about democratizing media and that um, social media democratizes media and, of course, fake news is part of that democratization. Democratizing finance, peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces tend to be that sort of democratization. What was interesting for me was that Robin Hood suspended the, not the trading, but the the selling, The sorry, they suspended buying of stock so it could only be shorted. And I want to see how Warren, Elizabeth Warren and the other lady handle this. If they go after the Reddit guys, that's a different thing than if they go after the than if they go after the hedge funds, or if they go after Robin Hood for stop stopping trades. Robin Hood said that Citadel, Citadel, whatever they're called, wouldn't allow them to do it, and then Citadel bought Melvin. And if you've looked into any of the market maker things then you'll know what I'm talking about I don't, let's not go into that but fascinating really really fascinating so 4.3 thousand comments on what if you haven't read it yet go and read their version I've got some other versions for you that I can share as well um, limited buys of these securities Why are they off? Why are they suggesting Tyler Winklevoss to me? <laughs> I don't know. Should I follow him or Vlad? No, Vlad's the guy that started the whole thing up. So he's got a whole thread on what's going on. I've read it. I've read all the comments. You sold people's stock without their permission. How can you even think you'll come back from this? So dumb money is where the presumably an app thinks they can do what they want and that there are no repercussions. So the question is, does Elizabeth Warren and who's the other lady, the Treasury lady? I don't know. Yellen, US Treasury Secretary. Will Elizabeth Warren, will Janet Yellen, will any of the those regulatory type people come for Citadel, Melvin, Robin Hood app or will they come for the Reddit group that don't like the shorting of the markets, the shorting? I don't know. It's going to be fascinating and it'll work just about as well as the ACCC coming for Facebook and Google us at the ACCC slash media coming for Facebook and Google, which means we will get some changes, but it's going to blow up. It's going to blow up in a big way. And now that the community's learned that mummy and daddy don't like this, that the government and hedge funds don't like this play, guess what they're going to do? Because we are in the chaos stage of change. If you look at change, you'll see that there is a, a time when everything has to break down. Politics have to break down. Media has to break down. Economic structures have to break down. And it will... I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, probably till 2023. 2023, 2022 to 2023. So what are we looking at? One, two, three years, which is much faster than I originally thought it would all happen. But running some numbers, I can sort of see that as one group are taken out of the economic play, another group will come in and it will be like, is it Wampa Mole where you're trying to hit let me check. Let's put this up. I need to. I need to know if womp a mole is a thing. <laughs> Please tell me it is. 
Yeah, that one. So in the same way you can take out right-wing news that more jump up. And in the same way that you can um, block trolls, more jump up. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done with algorithms around this. And once Facebook and Twitter have to take out fake politics, fake health and fake finance, what's left? I know. Probably TV shows. Have you watched The Stand? Ah, Talk about prescient. Okay, I know Stephen King wrote the book in the 70s and then it was updated for the 90s. But the newest update was made in 2019 and released in March 2020. And it's about a pandemic that hits the world globally and is... Once America realizes that they've got the pandemic and they're crashing, they send the virus to China and to some other places and the whole, it has a 99.7% fatality rate. The first episode, even if you watch nothing else, but the first episode is like, how prescient. This was filmed in 2019 and then released in March 2020. So all the editing and everything would have been done. Um, just watch the first episode, even if you don't watch anything else. I quite like it. We watched the last episode that's available to us last night. Actually, we binged and watched a bunch of them last night. Not quite as feel good as Bridgerton. <laughs> um, a little more into the sort of horror, spiritual crisis side. But anyway, I'm waffling. It's... 27 minutes past 11 so I've been on for nearly just on 30 minutes just past 30 minutes Mm. what was I talking about yeah finance so don't know what Warren's going to do what don't know what Yellen's going to do can they fix this I doubt it in order to fix it they need to fix the markets and nobody's willing nobody's got the political will to do that in order to fix fake politics you've got to fix the political sphere and nobody's got the political will to do that either Katrina Collins do not blame me for watching Bridgerton (laughs) I I really want to talk about it more on Facebook but I'm worried my mum's going to see my post and then she's going to watch it and it's way too sexy for mums in their 70s to watch (laughs) so hey mum if you're watching this video don't watch Bridgerton please I do not want to have that discussion with you in a few weeks um, when we come down to Adelaide, once the borders, once everything's calmed down properly again. I keep waiting for that, but it seems to take a while. Do you like it, uh, Katrina? Do you like Bridgerton? And Donna, if you're still watching, have you watched Bridgerton? <laughs> have you watched The Stand? And the other one I watched was uh, Winx, uh, about fairies in a Hogwarts-style school. And uh, I, it was pretty interesting, actually. I'd rejected Prime because I'm not a fan of Amazon. And then I saw a video on YouTube that, that was about a TV show, a film, TV show coming to Prime, immediately subscribed back to Prime again. So all my values and ethics went out the window. YouTube advertising works, but for me, it's like, The call to action part of YouTube videos is one in a thousand, if that. The, I guess, marketing side rather than sales, which is brand awareness and brand education, works much better. I I just remember those brands that I, even if I just see the first few seconds of the clip, I will remember them. But but that one definitely worked. Yeah, I like the costumes too. If you haven't seen Bridgerton, the costumes are not true to the era, but they're a modern take on the era, which is, for me, perfect, perfectly acceptable. Somebody said uh, Jane Austen and Emily Bronte and those guys would have been really upset with it, and I disagree. The, From what I remember from my literature studies, those writers at the time were very inflammatory, and women would read the books in brown paper covers so that 
people would know, wouldn't know that they were reading such sexy stories. And of course, our idea today of sexy is completely different to back then. All right, um, I'm glad you're enjoying Bridgerton. I'm sorry that I got you onto it. And <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it though. So Thursday, social media for government, content calendars, tools, EPGs, electronic programming guides. Um, I'm still thinking about whether I'm going to do something on Robin Hood, but if I do, it probably won't be alive. Or what I can do is pre-record the video, edit it and put it up, and then we can have a live to discuss it. If you're a social media manager, particularly of a listed company, sit up, pay attention. Apple lost $4.6 billion market cap off of the basis of something like a Reddit thing years ago. Have a look on my website and you'll see. It was reported on, some stuff was reported on Engadget. Apple lost $4.6 billion. They recovered it again, but they had to change their stance on that they don't respond to what they see on social media. And they had to respond before the closing of the bell. Um, what else? We've seen um, a story go up saying that the White House had been blown up and the markets crashed. But then people were looking out the window saying there's nothing wrong with the White House and the markets recovered. There was a group of engineers that started a peer-to-peer -peer bank so that they could fund each other's startups and technical, yeah, t startups, technical tools. Regulatory did step in. Regulatory also stepped in when a church created its own peer-to-peer -peer bank so that members could use donations and funding to support other people in the community. And there's not a lot of will behind that because you kind of want to say, if I donate 10 bucks on a Sunday at church and everybody else does, that money could go into a pool. But if we put it online and allow people to make donations and then choose who the donation is going to, which... Um, non-profit or which community group that's helping people why isn't that allowed or well, it's not under regulations it's not there's a lot of work to be done and I like I said I just don't think there's a political will to do it so there we go what did I say I was going to talk about today tours in Australia Apple privacy oh and GameStop GameStop is obviously the Robin Hood and Peter Peer finance stuff Okay. Are we done? I think we're done. If you found this interesting, and if you think somebody that you know is a social media manager or is involved in any of these things, maybe pass it on to them. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe or like or share or comment. Just pass it on to somebody else that you think would find it educational and helpful, because that's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate it when you do. <laughs> Actually, I see people sharing stuff. I go, oh, that's mine. They're sharing my, they found value in it. So please do that. Thank you very much. Do you like my glasses? I feel like an Instagrammer. An Instagram influencer with the pink computer glasses. I'm getting some eye strain. So there you go. <laughs> I am going to love you and leave you. If you have any questions and you'd like me to change out a Monday for Q&A, please let me know. I'm happy to swap from news to Q&A. And uh, yeah, all right, good. Thanks very much, guys. And I will see you next Monday at 10.45 for news and Thursday at 1pm for government and content calendars on social media.